let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody, Coast to Coast, This Week in America. The Watergate era, that 1970s decade of Nixon, Woodward, and Bernstein, gave us also that strange character with the obscene moniker Deep Throat, an unidentified character for more than 30 years. Well, the new book, The Watergate Deep Throat Secret, a new investigative story of Bernstein, Woodward, and the FBI's Mark Felt by Joseph M. Webb, is in short the story of Deep Throat. Not only who he was, yes, he was quite real, but the political obscene things he did from his number two position within the FBI itself. Deep Throat was, in fact, Mark Felt, the FBI's most feared hatchet man. A highly original story filled with new Watergate research and observations. Serious challenges to the truthfulness of the famous Woodward Bernstein and Robert Redford book and movie, All the President's Men. As a journalist and journalism professor for more than 50 years, Joseph Webb began his Watergate research even as the events of that era were unfolding in the 70s. Webb, Woodward, and Bernstein, all about the same age, were prominent newspaper reporters at the same time, they in Washington, D.C., and he in Chicago and the Illinois State Capitol. Joseph, who has two doctorate degrees and a dozen earlier books, has collected, analyzed, and documented volumes of the Watergate story, over all the years since it began. And Joseph M. Webb, author of The Watergate Deep Throat Secret, a new investigative story of Bernstein, Woodward, and the FBI's Mark Felt, is our guest on This Week in America. Joe, welcome to the program. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. So much great information here. And if you're like me and think, I pretty well know the Watergate story. I lived it from day to day, waiting for the newspapers to come out to follow what was going to be happening, what had happened the day before. This is going to open your eyes. Uh, And all of this highly researched, the book is The Watergate Deep Throat Secret. Let's start with the, the origin in your research in this and why you decided to do this deep dive, because it really is an intense research project you undertook. Yeah, and it uh, uh, in nineteen it starts for me in 1968, which is about four years before. At the uh, 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 folks uh, who are closer to my age will remember that 68 was the great Democratic National uh, Republican uh, National Convention in Chicago. Yes, uh, the one that uh, broke out in uh, in an absolute uh, uh, furor of uh, of. Uh, uh, of uh, flamboyant kinds of, uh, of uh, disturbances, and uh, and and I was a uh, had a had a new master's degree in journalism from the University of Illinois, and my newspapers in downstate Illinois sent me to Chicago to cover that, and so I got a, a baptism of fire by being at the at the 1968 convention, and uh, had a grand time. I learned learned stuff you never learn in school, and uh, so when seventy two came around, I was still in Illinois, uh, still with my uh, five newspapers, the Lindsay Schaub Group of newspapers, daily papers, and um, and uh, Im- immediately uh, wanted to connect to the to the uh, the new convention that uh, that uh, was about to open, and um, uh, so so the the. My interest in it began with uh, with the breakout of everything, and I immediately in uh, Illinois began to collect information. I was not sent to to cover it, but I began to to collect information that that came from the Washington Post and the New York Times and places like that. And that's that's so uh, that's what I could, what I did. I collected information on it for fifty years. It's from amazing. Then until two or three years ago. And my wife one day said, uh, all, all that box is a stuff you got. What are you going to do? And I said, well, it's time I get it out and do something with it. And that's when I got it out and, and turned, it worked for two years to turn out the book. So. so many revelations in the book. The Watergate Deep Throat Secret, a new investigative story of Bernstein Woodward and the FBI's Mark Felt. Joseph M. Webb is our guest on the program, the author, book available. Amazon, wherever books are sold, a link on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Let's talk about the secret source of Watergate information. That's something at the beginning of the story we kept hearing about, the secret source. Uh, what's the origin of that? In, in, in fact, was there a, a secret source in the beginning? 
Well, yes, uh, in fact, there was. And it came about uh, a young, two young reporters, uh, uh, Carl Bernstein, uh, Bernstein and Woodward, and everybody knows, of course, they're still alive and still seen on TV from time to time. Yes. Uh, and uh, but uh, but then they were 30 ish like I was. We were the same age or the same age. And um, and uh, and uh, what essentially took place was that uh, uh, this uh, they, they were both report new reporters for The Washington Post. And um, and out of the blue, of course, comes this uh, event, which took place on June the 17th, as I recall, June 17th, 1972, when a group of five, uh, uh, five proxies of the Republican Party broke into, uh, broke into the Watergate Hotel complex in Washington, D.C., and um, uh, and and the strange thing was the the unplanned thing was that they got caught that night doing that. Um, people my age will remember the news of that. Yes. But yes. Uh, but the, the the story of it is that uh, uh, very very briefly it is that uh, uh, a couple of them went into the Watergate before it closed up at five o'clock and taped some of the uh, taped some of the doors in uh, those uh, bar type doors taped so that they would stay open and uh, so after the store after the the place closed uh, they went back and uh, and uh, got into those doors that they had taped to be open to them what they had not counted on was that there was a a, a night watchman making the rounds through the building and in the midst of them starting their break-in process this uh, night watchman found the door that he, with the tape that he had put on an hour or two earlier, missing. And he knew something was wrong. He thought at first somebody had just forgotten to do it that was leaving the building uh, to go home. So he retaped it. And then he came back again and found the tape off a second time. And that time is when he called the police and said, something's going on here. The police immediately swarmed the building, found the burglars, and by this time it's midnight, and uh, there is a uh, there's a night court, and uh, all of the burglars were taken straight to night court, and uh, and, and the Washington Post called Carl uh, called uh, Woodward Bob Woodward, a young reporter, new report, relatively new reporter, and sent him to court to cover that thing. So Woodward was sitting there the night that the five burglars were brought before a judge in the middle of the night. And that's how that was the kickoff to this whole thing, because Woodward then goes back to the post the next day and writes up the story of what happened. And with that, um, a whole series of, uh, of events begin. But uh, it, it had that kind of a serendipitous uh, start to it. Well, yeah, when you heard that story, it's like an interesting story, <laughs> footnote to history, but suddenly it's, it spins totally out of control and ends up, of course, breaking down a president. It's a, a fascinating <laughs> new look with new information in uh, Joseph Webb's book, The Watergate Deep Throat Secret, for a full 30-year period there from 1975 to 2005. Uh, we hear about Deep Throat, but we really didn't know much about the character, that this was this mysterious character. We did not know who it was. W was that totally true? Did nobody know me, who, who it was? Let me take you, let me take you to the next uh, major thing that takes place, and it is that uh, uh, Woodward and Bernstein are assigned to normal rounds. Woodward was assigned to do rounds uh, in, the, in White House offices and um, uh, various ones, just a standard reporter making, making his rounds and yes. writing his story when he gets back. And he sat in, in a waiting room uh, one evening, not long after this, and a, a second person showed up and sat down near him in that same room. And the two of them began to talk, apparently the only ones in the room. And the person who introduced himself to him was Mark Felt, who was the number two person at the FBI, had come to see whoever's office they were in at the same time Woodward. So they get acquainted that night. And Woodward, um, uh, uh, he finds out Woodward who Woodward is. Woodward finds out he's a reporter for the Post, and 
and uh, Woodward uh, says, uh, Will you, if I need help, can I can I call you sometime? <laughs> and Mark Felt was that kind of congenial fellow <laughs> who said, yeah, go, yeah, call, call me. I'll, I'll, I'll help you. And that's how it started. Amazing. That was the connection. And uh, the only problem was that Felt told Woodward there was one thing he could not do. And that was tell anybody who he was uh, or that he was with the FBI getting his information. Okay, he could give him the information as long as it was not uh, he could print it, but not identify yes. its source. It, it would have to be a source told me that sort of thing. And um, and uh, so so what began was this, that um, the, uh, uh, they were in touch a great deal. And Woodward was writing really good stories based on uh, as the as the investigation of uh, of the break in continued. The FBI got very in, into it and. Uh, and uh, Felt had no trouble calling Woodward and saying, here's some new stuff we're working on, secret. You don't know where you got it. I'm giving it to you. Don't tell us all, that sort of thing. And so he would go back to his uh, editors at the Washington Post and, and give the editors this rundown on the story. And the editors would say, where'd you get it? He said, I can't tell you. And, um, and so what happened was that at one of these meetings, um, one after after they know he can't tell us because he's got a secret source somewhere, uh, which the, uh, the reporters kind of mocked him about. Uh, one of the reporters said, OK, here comes another source from Woodward's deep throat. And the reason he said that was because that that early pornographic movie starring Linda Lovelace. Vaguely deep, remember it. Had, yes, <laughs> that had, had, just, had just had just opened in Washington, D.C. <laughs> That's why the guy had <laughs> that had the deep throat, the name of the movie uh, in his mind. And so it was uh, and and the, his character, at least within the newspaper world uh, uh, that of the Washington Post became known as Woodward's deep throat. And uh, that's what that's where it came from. And from that point on. Uh, uh, he had to identify deep throat for his editor and for uh, for the uh, dear woman whose name slips me at the moment, who owned the Washington Post. Oh, Catherine Graham, probably. Catherine Graham. Yes. Yeah, had, had Catherine wanted to know, okay, who, who are we talking about? So both of the both the editor, who was Ben Bradley, and 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 Catherine Graham knew the knew, knew this identity, but but nobody reading his stories would ever know the identity. It would always be a, a source, a highly placed source was the only way. But but uh, one of the questions that always comes up is where to get that name. And that's where he got. That's how he got the name. Based that, on the movie, the that, Linda Lovelace motion picture was, classic. It, yes, that uh, <laughs> all of this and so much more unfolds. I shouldn't act like I'm that familiar with uh, with Deep Throat and Linda Lovelace. So uh, we'll, no, edit, okay. we'll edit that out of the program. The Watergate, the, the Deep Throat <laughs> Secret is the book, a new investigative story of Bernstein Woodward and the FBI's Mark Felt by Joseph Webb. Book is available wherever books are sold. Uh, his website, Joseph M. Webb with two B's dot com. Uh, books there, information on the book, order it there as well, Amazon.com. Uh, marketing being assisted by King Pages Press, their website, kingpagespress.com. How did the FBI character, a character as the leaker of the Watergate information, how did that become known? Because at, at one point, I'm not sure when, but it, it, it was implied at least it was somebody in the FBI that was the leaker. How did that happen? Well, uh, uh, of course, it, it's hard to keep that kind of thing private, uh, private yes. if you are writing stories that uh, where, where at various points you have to give clues. But we actually don't know the story until a year and a half or so later when um, now what, what Woodward and Bernstein, who were who were partners in all of this, uh, covering different stories. But on on the on the Watergate story, often wrote uh, you, you write that one, I'll write this one. And, and they'd be related stories to each other. So, so they're both involved in this, and um, and and what uh, what essentially happens uh, is that um, uh, that uh, they uh, the fact is that uh, that the name or the identity of Deep Throat never shows up in the Washington Post. 
Um, but the other thing that's going on is behind the scenes is that these two young reporters, being aggressive kinds of guys, both of them, um, are, are, are anxious to get a, a book into publication. So, so there are two or three book representatives who make the regular rounds of places like the Washington Post looking for potential authors. And, uh, and one of those well-known um, uh, book um, promoters, pu uh, uh, not the publisher, but uh, the agent, uh, book agent, um, gets acquainted with both Woodward and Bernstein, and they say, help us get, us a, get a book contract out of somebody here. And, uh, and, and what, the, um, what the agent does is propose to them that they're working on this, uh, this Woodward, uh, this uh, Deep Throat story, and proposes that, uh, that that become their book. And so at the same time now that they are doing their daily reporting, they are now uh, in, in line to, uh, to get a book and the agent's going to handle it, get the book published for them. And uh, so, so uh, now we got multiple projects going. It's um, a, yeah. Well, we, and, it's, and, a, it's amazing how that all fit together and how Deep Throat with the book it became sort of what the, the main angle, that was sort of the hook that was going to get people interested in the book. That's right, and they didn't know that at the time that all this was brewing. But uh, but one of the interesting, one of the really truly amazing pieces of this puzzle is this: that um, that uh, the agent knew very well that with the Watergate story, he had a he had more on his hands than just a book. He had a movie idea on his in his uh, sights as well. In other words, get your book done, guys, and, and I'll I'll see that you got your movie contract. Well, he set the movie contract up long before they got the book done. Uh, and uh, the, the, um, uh, I want to tell you one other thing about that, but I want to save it for uh, just a moment. Um, but, uh, and, and so what happens is that uh, they begin work not only on, uh, on their newspaper, keep doing their newspaper work, but they, they quickly begin to develop a book based on their research, based on what they are writing about in the in the uh, in the post and and that book is uh, is published in 1974 and uh, the book is titled all the president's men when it comes out uh, it's a it's a it's a hit because everybody wants to know and not only that but uh, that is the that is the way that the american people were introduced to the character known as deep throat it is a massive book. I still have that on the bookshelf here, and I, I keep thinking, do I really need to hang on to that? Yes, it's history. Yes, I, I you, need to yes, hang on do. to the book. This is a book you'll want to hang on to as well, The Watergate Deep Throat Secret, a new investigative story of Bernstein Woodward and the FBI's Mark Felt. Uh, time going so quickly in the program, so much great information. I'll I encourage know. you I, to to go to the uh, to the bookstore and pick up a copy of this, but I, I think you were going to touch on how Robert Redford began uh, began his interest in this because this deep throat it really goes a lot deeper, doesn't it? Uh, no pun yes, intended it, there, but it's really captured that captured our attention. And that's sort of the hook for all these projects. Let me tell you one thing about it. And then I want to go to one last point. But uh, uh, the, the one interesting point is that uh, deep throat is not identified in the book. It, he is always deep throat. And, um, and uh, the question that comes out, of course, the book is uh, who who was deep throat and they come they 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 are allowed to give no real inferences at all about identity and uh and and they adhere to that so you can read the book and not know who deep throat was but that was a frustrating thing for those of us who bought the book thinking yeah now we're got, we're about to <laughs> we're about to meet this well we met the character yes but we didn't we didn't have a name to go with it um we actually knew he was from the fbi but uh, but the interesting thing about it is that uh, that the agent also set up this movie contract with Robert Redford and uh, and they begin quickly to put together a movie. But uh, the problem was that um, that uh, uh, the the book uh, could be produced rather quickly, but the movie was going to take two years. And and the problem for that that posed for everybody is a is a major kind of problem. And it was this 
that the book must come out and match the movie. In other words, what the book says and the movie presents must be the same story. But the makers of the movie, they read the story uh, that, uh, that uh, the Woodward Bernstein guys were working on. And they, uh, there, there's, a, uh, there's one episode uh, that, um, uh, where uh, Woodward and uh, Woodward meets Mark Felt in the underground garage someplace in Washington, D.C., and they have a meeting. And when they, and it's only one, only one story. Uh, and, and so what happens is the movie people get a hold of that and realize that visually, to make their movie, that has to become a major recurring event, or the movie has not enough story to hold up. And so they begin work on a script that becomes the movie that has seven underground wild stories of secretly Woodward and uh, Mark Felt meeting and trading information in the underground garage. And that's a major piece of the movie. The problem is that that didn't really happen. And, but, it had, but if the movie was going to do it, Okay, and uh, the movie's not going to come out for two years after the book. Then guess what the book writers have to do in order not to get caught on a on a hard limb? Oh, yes, you see, <laughs> and this became the problem because what the book writers had to do, Woodward and Bernstein do, is to make the book story that they told be exactly what the movie was going to be, even though. The book would come first, and the movie would come later. Now, I don't know if that made sense. To yes, it, it, yeah, way. it takes us back to that time and how long it, it took to do the movie. This was a moving Bingo. story too, with uh, with Watergate and uh, and Deep Throat and who is Deep Throat. I yeah. want to talk, uh, and again, the name of the book, because you want to copy, The Watergate Deep Throat Secret, a new investigative story of Bernstein Woodward and the FBI's Mark Felt, our guest on the program, Joseph M. Webb. He's the author of the book. His website is very simple, josephmweb.com, all this on our website. You were one of the first people to, to visit the, uh, uh, the library. Library. At the University of Texas, the archive. Talk about that and the information that was there. And it had to be eye-opening for you to get all of this information. Well, one of the things, yeah, yeah, there, uh, there was a lot of competition for Woodward and Bernstein papers, uh, all of their, their reporting papers and all of that, because uh, everybody thought if we get their papers, what are we going to find out? The one question nobody knew how to answer, and that was, who is Deep Throat? That was an unanswerable question. It had been so well guarded, okay? And the University of Texas paid them $5 million thinking they were buying <laughs> the identity of uh, Deep Throat. And so some of us uh, reporters, I was one of them. I lived in Florida at that time. But I, I, I within the, a week after it all opened, I headed out and spent a week at, with the archive uh, in, at the University of Texas, and they set up a separate room for them. And, uh, and we're all looking for the same thing. We're all looking for, for Deep Throat. And the problem, of course, was that he was not there. He is no, was nowhere in the archive. And uh, I don't know if they've since adjusted things over the last uh, uh, 50 years or not, but... Uh, but uh, we all who went looking for the identity of yes. Deep Throat were disappointed uh, simply because uh, uh, he, he was not there. And, uh, and, that, that, uh, and I, I subsequently went, went back to the archive a second time and gathered just information. And it was a good source of information. Much of what's in the book uh, originally came from the library's archive there. So d and direct from the archive, the book is The Watergate Deep Throat Secret, a new investigative story, and it is new, of Bernstein Woodward and the FBI's Mark Felt. You'll find out that uh, Mark Felt had a chip on his shoulder. He wanted to be the new J. Edgar Hoover. That didn't happen. He wasn't real pleased with it and uh, sort of uh, shaded his, uh, his activity after that. The book is available wherever 
books are sold, uh, his website, the author's website, Joseph M. Webb, W-E-B dot com, B-B dot com. And all this, of course, on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. A couple minutes left in the program. I want to talk about the fact that uh, we were led to believe Mark Felt was talking exclusively to Woodward Bernstein. That was the combination <laughs> of reporters. Uh, was that was that true, or was he also sharing some information with other reporters? Oh no, he was. Uh, it, it is quite clear from from other things that he himself wrote, and he uh, Mark Felt later wrote a little book of his own. Uh, doesn't say a lot, but one of the things it does, and I think it's. Uh, there, there are one or two places you can find information. He was, uh, he was actually assisting about four or five uh, reporters, um, even though he got by with convincing Woodward that Woodward was the only one he was talking to. He was giving it to the new to uh, uh, my recollection is the New York Post, uh, Time Magazine was getting a lot of help from Mark Felt. Um, as well as about, and there were about five different uh, different uh, sources. Um, the, the interesting thing that uh, is, is also in my book, uh, are in the back of the book are a number of documents uh, which uh, were declassified in the 1980s, long after, long after this is over. And one of the things you find out is that, uh, that uh, Mark, Mark felt um, is is truly a villain in this story because um, because he as as the number two guy in the FBI he had been given the responsibility of finding who was leaking stories out of the <laughs> Washington FBI files yes. to all of these media people and the fact is that uh, what, ha- what 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 he would do is he would gather as, in the regular meetings of all the FBI officials and say whoever whoever is leaking information we're going to find you you better stand up and identify yourself now and it was felt who was talking and felt was the only leaker in the room and uh, it it is um, it's it's a bizarre thing to read his memos um, which in effect accuse various uh, other FBI agents of leaking here and leaking there and sending m- m- information here and so forth. And uh, all the FBI agents are denying that they are, and with good reason, because Felt was trying to keep the attention off of himself yes. through process. So the leaker was accusing other people of leaking. It's a fascinating behind the scenes story. A, a minute or so left. I want to talk about uh, journalism professor for five decades. Uh, we keep hearing a lot about the secrecy of journalistic sources, especially now. If we don't want to believe a story, we question the secrecy of journalistic sources. In fact, uh, some politicians have said you really need, you have to name who these sources are or we'll put you in jail. I mean, you can't just say that. Talk about the ethics and of the secrecy of journalistic sources, because you've followed journalism for a number of years. Well, uh, journalists, uh, working journalists, just don't believe in secrecy of journalism. Yes, uh, and simply, simply because that's uh, that's the profession of the uh, the profession itself is uh, designed to be open to, uh, to tell the world what's going on, and secrecy is precisely what journalists are out to kind of battle against. And of course, what they run up against are are. Uh, are law enforcement and and uh, public officials and so forth who are doing things that they want to keep secret, and so it's the the, the battle between journalists and public people is uh, as, there's no solution to it. It's 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 been a part of American history for a long time and will be well into the future. The the, the people who are making the news want to keep it quiet because letting it out just gets them into hot water and have to explain this and that and so forth. And of course, the journalists are adamantly determined that uh, if you did something, I'm going to tell the world about it. I don't care what you think. With the state of journalism today, what would happen if Woodward Bernstein came across the story? They have a source. Now, they went, as you talked about, they went to the editor, the publisher. They wanted to know who this was before they put the stamp of approval on that. But would that happen today, that you could do a story of that magnitude and not publicly name the source? Would that, would that happen today? Uh, it, it, it's harder simply because uh, the, the ways of discovering things that newspaper people are doing are, are, are far more sophisticated than they were 40, 50 years ago. Yes. And uh, so it would be very, very hard to do. 
and uh, and at and at the same time, um, there there are enough people who are committed to doing that uh, within the professional uh, media industries that uh, keeping secrets is the hardest thing in the world to do today, despite the fact that uh, that there are so many people committed to who who are making decisions and wanting those decisions to be somehow somehow kept. The one last thing I'd like to say, if you sure, just sure, yes, second, please. That, that that the 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 point that my book tr- tries to make and uh, uh, is that that the story uh, the story that uh, is told in all the president's men and in the movie uh, ha- has deep throat as a major character meeting Woodward in the underground garage seven times for fun and games. And absolutely none of that. There's no evidence whatsoever that that happened. In fact, Woodward himself, not Woodward, um, uh, uh, felt himself, wrote in his little book that, yes, he had met Woodward one time. And even then he was nervous about meeting him. So he took his assistant along with him. That's the only reference he ever makes to, to seeing Woodward in a place like the underground garage. And to me, that is the secret. The secret is that the story that ended up in our history books about that underground garage turns out not to be true. So that, that, that's, that's the gist of where my book goes. And what I try to do is explain how that all happened. Well, you do, and you do it so well. It's such an excellent read. This will be a must for your home library, The Watergate Deep Throat Secret, a new investigative story of Bernstein Woodward and the FBI's Mark Felt. Book available, of course, wherever books are sold. Give you all that information here and uh, in a second or so as we wrap up this conversation. As you find out during uh, the conversation with uh, with Dr. Webb today, this is new information that's out there and uh, uh, sort of behind the scenes things that we just didn't know about as it was happening back during the uh, the 1970s. Joseph, it's been a pleasure having you on the program. Hopefully we can do this again. So much more to talk about. Thank you for, <laughs> thank you for being with us on the program today. Thank you, sir. It's a pleasure to meet you and to, uh, I know of your show and I'm just absolutely thrilled to be part of it. Thank you. Yeah, for we're including. delighted that you're with us thank on the program to share the story behind this, this wonderful book that's uh, brand new, written by Joseph W. Webb, W-E-B-B. The book is The Watergate Deep Throat Secret, a new investigative story of Bernstein Woodward and the FBI's Mark Felt. The book available on his website, josephmweb.com, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, The Usual Places, kingpagespress.com, the author's marketing consultant, and all of this, of course, on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. That's what you're listening to, This Week in America, and there's more on today's program, and we're back right after these messages. Thank you, sir. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.